Assembling a high quality model steam plant, part 15. Connecting the steam pipes to the boiler, the engine and the pump in steam, and setting the safety valve. Today I went to see my friend Chris English at CME Engineering, and while I was there I bought some of these. These are T-pieces, and these are the ones that he makes. Very good they are too. I'm using this T-piece simply to split the steam feed. There are also very useful things to have for mounting displacement lubricators. I'm making a temporary pipe to connect the pump to the T-piece. I'm going to make a special fitting which incorporates a mounting for a displacement lubricator, but this is just a temporary pipe so I can run the plant. Also the condenser's not piped in properly. The exhaust from the steam engine just sits over the holes into the condenser. The first thing I need to do is fill the boiler. Now I can use the hand pump, that's no problem at all. Or I can do it this way, I've connected my air line to the pump and let the pump do all the work. Normally with the bypass valve fully open, the water just circulates from the tank to the pump and back to the tank. But if I shut the bypass valve, all the water is directed into the boiler. And as you can see, it's filling the boiler fairly quickly. This is quite a large boiler too, 6 inches in diameter. And look, the water's positively charging up the sight glass. And listen to the pump. The pump is running very slowly on hardly any air pressure at all. But because this is a twin cylinder double acting pump, there is water being pumped into the boiler at every stroke. And for one viewer who didn't seem to understand anything about this pump, the reason I put a bypass valve in is so that the pump can be run just for entertainment purposes to watch the thing work, rather than it having to feed the boiler. This viewer said, well, surely you just turn it on and turn it off. Yes, you do. But really, it's not going to do a lot of running if all it's doing is filling this boiler, which will take about 20 seconds. In no time at all, the water tank is completely empty. And now the boiler is half full of water, it's time to light the gas. The more observant amongst you may notice that this is not the small gas tank that I used in the last test. This is a larger, more sensible sized tank. It's actually a can of camping gas with a Z on the end. And I find this to be fine, it's butane, it's not butane and propane mix, it's just butane. And it works for me on my model steam applications in the workshop. The ceramic burner that's fitted to this boiler, and I don't know what it's like because I haven't had it in pieces to look at it, is very good. It's very quiet and it's generating quite a lot of heat with its number 16 jet. And by using camping gas, which is butane and runs at a lower pressure than the propane butane mix, you will note there is no howling. Generally with a low gas pressure, the howling disappears. The gas in the commercial canisters, which is 70% butane and 30% propane, initially makes a howling noise, but these small canisters chill very quickly and the pressure soon drops and the howling stops with those. While the boiler is raising steam, I'm just taking this opportunity to oil the Twin Victoria, ready to give it a bit of a run. I haven't yet fitted a displacement lubricator to the pump, so I won't be able to run that for very long. I've pumped quite a lot of steam oil into the cylinders, so it'll be okay for a while. And by the look of it, this boiler just supplies wet steam, so everything will be okay. I'm fitting a very temporary exhaust pipe to the condenser, with a length of silicone rubber tubing, just so the hot exhaust doesn't splutter out onto the baseboard. The two main exhaust pipes from the Twin Victoria are only sort of touching the inlets on the condenser, so there will be a bit of leakage there. And I've just noticed we have some pressure in the boiler. The gauge has lifted, and I'm quite surprised because the last time I tried this, uh, it took about an hour and I got nothing, mainly due to the fact that the pointer on the actual gauge was bent round the wrong side of the stop. There were some problems with this boiler generally, and I'm awaiting a phone call from Stuart Models to tell me why this is so. But the man I need to speak to is currently on holiday, so I'm just waiting for his call. I sit by the phone every morning, and it doesn't ring. And I sit by the phone in the afternoon, and it still doesn't ring. Seriously though, there are one or two problems with the boiler. Nothing serious, but I do need to speak to someone about it. Here's a quick panorama of the entire plant, from a low down level. And it's looking good. I'm just waiting for the water to start bubbling in the water gauge. Very soon I will have a bit of pressure. I really don't know why this ceramic burner is so loose. 
But when I finally speak to the man from Stuart Models, I will ask him this and many other questions. The water in the water gauge is starting to move up and down, and this generally means there's some pressure. I've already given the engine a push to clear the condensate, and it's now running under its own steam. And it runs very slowly too. I'll just stop talking so you can listen to the engine. That's enough of that, time to run the pump. This pump is a bit of an unknown quantity as far as steam's concerned. The late Bernard Walker who built the pump in 1995 just used to run all his models on compressed air at exhibitions. Since I got rid of the silicone rubber, it's pumping water beautifully from the tank and back to the tank. Is it going to fill the boiler though? I'll find that out shortly. What I'm going to do now is set the safety valve. As I mentioned before, I'm not a great fan of Stuart safety valves, I don't like the noise that they make. And this one is no exception, it's going to start making that horrible noise. And also, it's blowing off at just under £50 per square inch. When I look at the boiler test certificate that came with the boiler, it states clearly that the working pressure is £60 per square inch, so I'm going to adjust the safety valve so that it blows off at £60 per square inch, not just under 50 This is not aimed as any criticism, it's a normal thing to adjust the safety valve once the boiler is in steam. And the adjustment of this type of Stuart safety valve starts with an Allen key. I undo the Allen grub screw and that allows me to turn this ring and then I turn the top part as well. And once it's all locked together and the grub screw re-tightened, the setting of the safety valve should remain constant. It can't vibrate loose. Once I start the duplex pump and shut the bypass valve, the pump is now pumping cold water into the boiler, so the pressure soon drops. And thankfully the safety valve stopped making that horrible noise. It's still just about to blow off. It's still blowing off low. I'll have to readjust it. Generally speaking, Sometimes it takes two or three adjustments to get the valve to stabilise. But as I've mentioned before, I'm not the biggest fan of Stuart safety valves. My personal preference is for pop safety valves. And the ones that I use are made by a company called Jubilee Fittings. And they're made in England, not far from here in fact. Jubilee Fittings are a trade-only organisation, but Blackgates Engineering do sell their products. After several attempts at tweaking this safety valve, finally it settled down and it blew off at £60 per square inch and stopped blowing off around £50 per square inch, which is really what I needed it to do. And once again, to stop anything working loose, I re-tightened the small Allen grub screw. On all full-size steam boilers and most model steam boilers, there is a blow-down valve at the bottom of the water gauge and that's because water gauges get air bubbles in them and do not give accurate readings, therefore need blowing down periodically. It's time now once again to open the steam valve and let the pump do its stuff. The boiler seems to be holding its own against the input of cold water from the pump, although looking at the pump quite a lot of the cold water is leaking out of one of the glands. The gland nuts do need tightening up on the pump, that's a job I have to do along with one or two others yet. I'll run the engine at a good speed. I think it probably needs a bit more oil by now. So I'll just stop talking for a while and let you watch and listen. These steam machines are definitely poetry in motion. One very good facility with this water tank is a drain tap, and this is the drain tap that also feeds the water pump. It's a very easy job to take off the pipe that goes to the water pump and replace it with a piece of silicon rubber pipe so you can drain the water into a suitable receptacle, just in case you store the steam engine in a very cold climate. But the most useful function of this tap in the water feed circuit 
is to allow you to shut off the water supply. Because after a run, once you remove the heat source, the boiler cools, the steam condenses, and a vacuum is created inside the boiler, which will normally suck all the water out of the water tank and fill the boiler right up to the top. What I'm doing at the moment is using a compressed air line to blow away all traces of water from the plant. And also, I put the air line into the steam engine to blow some oil through it, which I didn't show. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.